Hello everyone and welcome to Skill Capped. I'm Notorious Dub and today I'm going to be going over the five most important things that Hiko does that you need to start implementing into your game today. Now I could always do an in-depth analysis of Tenz's gameplay and say, well just get better at aiming. But while Hiko also has that insane aiming ability, he's much more methodical, slow, and formulaic about his rounds. Which is why it's so important to take a look at his play because it's things we can pick up on and plug into our game right now and start working on. Because Hiko, although he is the undisputed bait master, he actually has some of the best team play and synergy of anyone in the game right now. So let's dive in and take a look at exactly what we can learn from one of the best. But before we get into the number one tip, it's time for the question of the day. What do you think is the most important skill in Valorant? Now, my opinion on this one has changed repeatedly throughout my playing of Valorant, but recently I've been noticing just how valuable good movement is in the game. Now, from approaching corners correctly, strafe shooting, jiggling corners, and creating movement in between shots, the movement system really just has so much reward if you start to really try to incorporate it into your game. So while it may not be as flashy as aim or obvious as game sense, it's one of those overlooked skills that can really boost your game. But I do know a ton of you are going to disagree with me, which is exactly why I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments down below what you think is the most important skill in Valorant. Alright, so tip number one, and honestly the answer to the most ask questions that I've had all time in Valorant is how to post plant. And it's simple, just do like Hiko and post plant with your teammates. Now this may seem simple, and it kind of is, but even up to the Immortal and Radiant games it seems like no one knows how to position themselves to play with their teammate on the post plant, or they just don't want to. Whether you're trying to get to an aggressive or a safe post plant, it doesn't matter as much as getting to one of your teammates and playing in an area that allows you to help them with their fights and allows them to help you with yours because then you have the ability to play off of each other's utility as well as being able to fight off of each other's contact. Like in this clip, Hiko and Still managed to pull off an insane 2 versus 3 because of how seamlessly they play together. And even without great comms and great team synergy like Hiko and Still, this play is very easy to achieve because all it takes is Hiko to say, I have an arrow in 5, to get his cypher to tuck into a corner and realize that he doesn't have to do anything until his Sova arrow is up. From there, all you have to do is wait until the time is right and fight with your teammate, because even though Steel ran in and got no kills, he still created enough time and space for Hiko to pick up two kills very quickly without having to hit an incredible shot like he would normally have to. And from there, it's really just a 1v1 that most people would love to end up with if they started in the 3v2 situation that they originally had. Camera has Aaron eight. Or that's this one. Aaron seven. Five. Three. I don't see it right, actually. He's, he's not jump. flanking. Airing now. There you go, Aaron. Last player standing. One enemy remaining. So if you can learn anything from this tip, it's that if you can't think of anywhere good to post plant from, or you're just not safe enough to get to a good spot, just play by your teammate and play off of each other's utility and contact. And don't forget, if you're serious about improving, then go to skillcapped.com to unlock our hyper improvement system that will teach you how to win more gunfights, master your agent, and so much more. It's backed by our rank improvement guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. So come join over half a million satisfied members of Skillcapped, improve that KDA, and get the rank you've always wanted at skillcapped.com. Link is in the description below. And next up we have calling the round, and this is one thing that is very difficult to do for so many people that I've talked to, but I'm about to show you just how easy it can be. Now in Valorant it is a 5 on 5 team game, and unfortunately it does require a huge amount of team play to make it work consistently, but that's the best part about this game. It's that satisfying feeling when everything just clicks at the same time and falls into place, but it really only takes a little bit to make all of those pieces fall into place. Like in this round here, Hiko makes a ton of callouts, basically just commentary on what he's doing. But the one callout that pulls everything together is he tells the omen, you have flash, you flash and we go. I can, you can bait me anyway. Ready? You bait me. Flash and go, flash and go. Oh, he peeked, he peeked. You got the... 
and that one call out took his team from individually jiggling every angle just randomly to full on running into the site one after the other ready to trade out anyone in sight. But that is the most important thing. Whether the flash hits anyone is honestly kind of irrelevant. The thing that matters is that someone stepped up to tell them how they need to coordinate and it makes the entire game so much smoother when you have that one person who can call out a catalyst something that you're going to react off of and then your team just reacts off of it how they're told to. But it gets even better even if you don't think you have the game sense to pull out these coordinating calls you can also do the commentary route that I talked about earlier that Hiko does in most of the rounds that he plays. Like in this round right here the teams rotate back and forth until eventually the attackers end up at B site where Hiko has beautiful comms that are literally just him telling his teammates what he's watching and what the enemies could be doing based on the information that he has. And we can see the direct impact of this style of callouts at the end of the round where Hiko says I'm holding your right forever. I'm 10 HP. I'm just holding the right side forever. He could be back. All right, you're the, best. You're the greatest. Uh, Which lets the Reyna know they don't have to worry about that side of the map at all and can focus entirely on isolating her angles. And what do you know, she turns to clear the other angles and picks up the round winning kill on the Phoenix almost immediately. Now, it may take a while to get used to doing this, but if you can tell your teammates what you're doing, they're going to be more likely to be able to help you and they're going to know how to actually play for themselves because they know what you're doing. But after a time, this does become second nature and you just start to ramble off these call outs of what you're doing and what the enemy could be doing based off what you see. But next up we have team pressure because this is absolutely the bane of my existence in games because every game I have defenders on my team who peek solo and die just to cost us rounds. Well, hopefully to prevent that from ever happening again, let's take a look at how Hiko handles holding a site. Now on this round, it goes to show how useful early information is because it's able to get your team on a rotate and stack a site way easier and safer than any other way. And we're starting to realize that more and more, but the safe way to do that is to take whatever site has the most people playing on it and double up for information in one area of that site. Like A site on Haven, a ton of people love to solo peek long for kills and just as many people like to cheese peek sewers on defense. But the proper way to go about that is to take a buddy, throw a little bit of utility, and establish pressure in that area, whether it's sewers or long. And if there's no reaction, you can send your team off on their rotation. And just like here, the rotating jet picked up three kills instantly because she had two teammates to play off of. And the early peak that we talked about was actually very little risk for all of that reward because they had their utility and their teammates backing them up if they get peaked. But if they would have peaked solo, it would have been much higher risk because it's one person who has to be vulnerable when they're throwing utility and they're really only one person they have no one helping them and that's a bad defensive strategy because remember on defense taking 1v1s is always bad and those fights almost always favor the attacking team and next we have ultimate orbs these are one things that are super underrated but from day one Hiko has preached about the importance of controlling these areas but just recently we're seeing the impact of these orbs because of the competitive scene this seems like one of those one percent plays where it seems somewhat insignificant because you now have one more ult point that might lead to another ultimate this half which might lead to another kill but it's so much more than that first of all those one percents that we can take advantage of all add up into a huge step up in our gameplay because we're implementing a ton of one percent strategies that will eventually work in our favor but the impact these ultimate abilities have in this game is worth the control of these orbs alone now orbs like b main on bind for defenders and c long on haven for the attackers are orbs that are hugely favored towards one team over the other and you can easily farm orbs like this eight to ten times and a half without getting contested very much which essentially ends up being one and a half sage ults which essentially puts you up a man for a round and a half or almost two complete raise ults which at the least creates enough space to get you a bomb site for free and probably a kill after that and these ultimates have a huge impact on rounds, boosting your win chance by a huge margin of that round if you have one of these ultimates available. So when you see a free ultimate orb, farm it the entire game. Because realistically, it's probably going to be uncontested because most people don't value these orbs as much as they should, but make sure you're not inting to actually get the orbs. Make sure you're doing it safely, maybe even take a teammate with you. And finally, I have to talk about taking your time because this is one thing that really separates Hiko from the crowd. Now, Hiko has been playing first person shooters for a very long time, and he's developed this insane ability to be patient with the rounds and let them develop to him instead of having to force things to work. Now, too many people 
people get a kill and decide to rush instantly to the area that person was playing to flash in maybe and try and take way too much space, only to then be killed or overextend to where they can't actually support their team anymore and their team can't support them. And the round is all but lost because you're now separated. Like here we see Hiko and his team doing a very loose default. And Hiko is playing very slow for mid control, but he manages to pick up a kill on the guy who's playing Garage about 10 seconds into the round. Where here most people would push for space, Hiko realizes that the flank is open, and there are too many variables and he just can't push in aggressively here. He takes the time to let his team circulate around while he falls back, clears his flank, and re-secures his position. And then he waits for his team while he's clearing every little nook and cranny that he can. This took about 40 seconds from the first kill to his team now deciding where they want to go. But all of this time spent clearing and re-clearing pays off so often because you're not overextending. You're just taking what you can get, securing it, and forcing the enemies to play with the unknown not knowing where you could possibly be going. But remember, if you want to improve, win more gunfights, and get the rank you have always wanted, then check out skillcapped.com. Link is in the description below. But all of these things are what make Hiko Hiko. And aside from the inhuman reaction time, the 20 plus years of FPS experience, and the uncanny ability to bait, there is a ton of things we can pick up from Hiko to start working on today. So let me know in the comments what you think separates Hiko from the rest. And while you're down there, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn those notification bells on because we here at Skillcapped have a ton more comprehensive premium guides coming your way that you're going to want to stay up to date with so you can stay ahead of the pack. And as always, I want to thank you for spending this little bit of your day with us. And I'm Notorious Dub, signing off.